Why the Panama Canal is dying. If you've heard about the Panama Canal, you should know by now that it has an amazing waterway that connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, thereby making shipping way easier. But guess what? It's facing some serious challenges, and here's why it's struggling. There have been reports of low water levels, which is making movement difficult and forcing restrictions on the number of ships that can pass through. As a result, many ships are choosing to bypass the canal and take longer routes, increasing costs and causing delays. This situation is further influenced by disruptions in the Suez Canal and conflict in the Middle East. To solve this crisis, it seems like investing in new infrastructure projects could be a possible solution, but that's not even the real deal. First off, let's talk about size. Ships are getting bigger and bigger, carrying more cargo than ever before. The problem? The Panama Canal might not be able to handle these supersized ships. See, it has locks, like giant water elevators, to lift ships up and down to different levels. But these locks have limits on how big a ship can be. So, if ships keep getting bigger, they might not fit through the canal anymore. Due to this critical trade choke point in the western region, there have been some crises, and this has affected global trade and the economy. As you know, the canal, which has been providing a shortcut for ships travelling between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, is essential for the efficiency of trade routes between the US, Europe and Asia. The current unusual crisis, due to some natural and geographic factors, is still making it difficult to navigate. Around 5% of the world's trade and 40% of America's container traffic passes through the canal annually. There have been some economic significance to the canal to Panama, as the country earns a significant portion of its GDP from tolls charged on the ships that use it. Other routes, like the Suez Canal in Egypt, are giving the Panama Canal a run for its money. Some ships might choose to go through the Suez Canal instead, because it's faster or cheaper for them. And with more options available, the Panama Canal could lose out on business. The canal's unique operation requires large amounts of fresh water, primarily from Lake Aton. The water is used to raise and lower ships as they pass through the canal's locks. During a drought, such as the one caused by the El Nino event in 2023, the lakes that provide the water for the canal were not being replenished quickly enough. This resulted in dangerously low water levels, making it difficult for the canal to continue operating. Less water could lead to restrictions on how many ships can pass through, slowing down trade and hurting the canal's revenue. Like anything else, the Panama Canal needs upkeep. If it's not properly maintained, it could lead to breakdowns or closures, causing delays and headaches for everyone involved. The canal consumes about 52 million gallons of fresh water per transit, and without rainfall or alternative sources of water, the situation could become irreversible. However, the canal's economic and strategic benefits could be severely impacted if the water crisis continues. Then, there's climate change. Yep, yeah, it's affecting everything, even the Panama Canal. Changes in weather patterns could mean less rain, which is bad news for the canal because it relies on water to function. El Nino, a climate term that causes droughts in some areas, has been lasting longer than usual, worsening the water supply situation in Panama. The country's primary water source, Lake Gatton, supplies both the canal and the state, and the canal consumes a massive amount of water from the lake for each ship's transit, which is almost half a million of Panamanian's daily water usage. With only half of the usual number of ships being allowed to pass through due to water scarcity, trade flows between the US and several regions are being disrupted, causing massive delays for ships. It is estimated that wait times for ships without reservations have skyrocketed from around 2 days to over 11 days, making the longer route around South America a more viable option for some. The Canal Authority is bringing up increasingly harsh restrictions, including reducing the number of ships and their cargo volumes. These measures have resulted in an all-time high of $4 million bribe paid by a Japanese merchant vessel to skip the line, which is now a common practice for some ships. Due to this practice, the cost of bypassing the Panama Canal has decreased significantly due to shipping companies going for alternative routes due to the crisis in the Suez Canal. Most ships that are arriving in the Panama Canal are choosing to skip it and take the longer and more expensive routes around South America or Africa. 
The situation has gotten bad because of the fact that ships are also avoiding the Suez Canal due to a war in Yemen, leading to increased costs and inflationary pressures for consumers. Moreover, there has been interest in alternative infrastructure projects to the Panama Canal, with four major proposed alternatives, including the Bi-Oceanic Corridor, which aims to build a series of highways and bridges across South America to enable trucks to carry goods from coast to coast. However, the challenges of South America's unique geography, including the Andes Mountains and the Amazon Rainforest, have prevented the construction of such projects, making their use uncertain. Not just that, the underdeveloped region in South America, known as Gran Chaco, which extends across Bolivia, Argentina and Brazil, is home to only 3% of its population and has historically been undeveloped due to a lack of freshwater resources and rainfall. But then again, Paraguay has recently embarked on an unavoidable highway building spree, paving over 3,000 kilometers of additional roads and bridges since 2019. As soon as the Bi-Oceanic Corridor is completed in 2025, it will allow trucks from southwestern Brazil and Argentina to bypass the Panama Canal and travel directly to Pacific ports in Chile for quicker exports to Asia. This new trade route could significantly affect the Panama Canal's business as countries in the southern region would utilize it to save time and money. Other than that, there has also been a proposed alternative to the Panama Canal further north in Colombia, where the government plans to build an inter-oceanic train network connecting the country's railways between the Pacific and the Caribbean by building nearly 200 kilometers worth of additional track and tunnels. Once completed, it would transform Colombia into a new center of global trade in the western region. There's also the Nicaragua Canal, which could be seen as a potential rival to the Panama Canal. The idea of building a canal in Nicaragua has been on for over hundreds of years, with the country's geography lending itself to such a project due to the existence of Lake Nicaragua. However, the project has a weird history, having been abandoned several times due to various reasons, including the successful completion of the Panama Canal and lack of funding. The most recent attempt to build the canal began in 2013, when the Nicaraguan government awarded the construction bid to a Chinese company called Hong Kong Nicaragua Canal Development Company, HKND. The project was made to double Nicaragua's GDP and make the Chinese government the sole operator for 50 years. However, the project faced numerous challenges, including environmental concerns, protest from farmers over land expropriation, and financial instability due to the Chinese stock market crash and Wang Jing's loss of fortune. Despite the contractor's vow to finish the project, it has still not begun over a decade after its announcement, and Nicaragua's poor economy, corruption, and tensions with the United States makes the plan of building a canal similar to the Panama Canal increasingly unlikely. Aside from the construction of new canals, there have been talks on a revitalization of an old railway system, which is the inter-oceanic corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec in Mexico, which plans to become a faster and cheaper alternative to the Panama Canal. At the moment, the Mexican government is investing $2.85 billion into this project, which further includes modernizing and expanding ports, building a high capacity rail line and constructing industrial parks. The rail project is said to be capable of moving 1.4 million cargo containers between the oceans by 2033, representing about 33 million tons worth of total freight. From what we know, the rail project holds significant promise and competition for the Panama Canal, as it could potentially move half of the Panama Canal's volume within a decade. The success of this project is critical for developing southern Mexico, which has long been among the least developed area of the country. Despite being of interest to many economic and military powers, the future of the Panama Canal is quite unclear as it undergoes repairs. So, there you have it. The Panama Canal is facing some tough times ahead, but hey, I'd like to know your thoughts. Do you think the government and other appropriate bodies can find solutions to keep this iconic waterway going strong? Comment below, and if you enjoyed this video, do well to like and subscribe to the channel.